the bird's getting up. Thirty out six, John here, and today what we're going to be talking about is the uh, question that everyone asks these days: is what's gun for bear defense, ten millimeter or forty four magnum? Keep watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. The two most popular handgun cartridges for bear protection these days are the forty four magnum and the ten millimeter. 44 Maglum, of course, has been around a long time, been used for bear protection in Alaska since the late 50s. The 10 millimeter, even though it's been around since the mid late 80s, in the last 10 years, it's become popular for bear protection. Uh, so that, that's a choice that someone has to make. So let's uh, look at the differences and the advantages of each cartridge and handgun type. Both cartridges have been used uh, successfully against bear attacks. Here's one for a 10 millimeter uh, that uh, the, the person was able to save his life. This was from a Outdoor Life magazine. This bear attack happened last July of uh, 2021. A man had to shoot a grizzly that charged him uh, off the Chena Hot Springs Road near Fairbanks. It says here he used a 44 Magnum revolver. The bear ran off, but it stopped the charge. Most people that use a 44 Mag use something like this Ruger Super Red Hawk 4 inch. Very popular. Or they use a Ruger Super Black Hawk. A lot of people think a single action revolver is too slow to reload, and it is, but uh, has been used in a lot of bear encounters successfully. Ammunition should be something like this 300 grain hard cast lead. These are my hand loaded bear loads. This is going 1200 feet per second out of the four inch barrel. 240 grain hard cast lead is okay, it's not as good as the 300 grain, but it's, it's good. Uh, I would not use a jacketed hollow point. Try to get hard cast lead or maybe a jacketed soft point. Uh, and, and heavier bullets are better. There are all copper bullets. Um, those seem to work okay. I haven't heard of too many bear encounters with people using them. But in the penetration tests that I've seen, they seem like they'd be okay. One thing about a 44 Magnum, it has a proving track record. It's been used in Alaska as bear protection since the late 50s. There have been many, many bears stopped from charging and killed with a 44 Magnum pistol. A lot of people are using 10 millimeter automatic pistols. They use a Glock a lot. This is a Springfield Army XD. A um, little lighter than a 44 Magnum revolver. A lot of people find them easier to shoot. The magazine holds a lot more. This magazine holds, um, I think, 15. For bear protection ammunition for 10 millimeter, you want either like a hard cast lead. You have to make sure it is a hard cast lead bullet. At least 180 grains, preferably 200 or maybe 220 grains. Full metal jacket, uh, either a 200 grain or a 180 grain. The 180 grain is light, but there are cases of people using a 180 grain hard cast lead or FMJ bullet uh, for protection against uh, brown and grizzly bears. I would not use some type of jacketed uh, hollow point like this right here. It might be okay for black bears at short range, but... Um, it's not really a, a grizzly bear or brown bear round. One advantage of most uh, semi-automatic pistols is that it's easy to mount a light on it. Like this one here on this uh, Springfoot Armory XDM. Pretty easy to turn on. 
at night time, even nighttime bear encounter comes in handy. The argument is usually that the 10 millimeter is better than the 44 Magnum because you can shoot it faster, uh, it holds more ammunition, and the 10 millimeter is powerful enough to stop a bear. As opposed to a 44 Magnum, which is slower to shoot, but has significantly more stopping power on a brown grizzly bear and the gun is all steel so it's more reliable than a, a polymer type high capacity 10 millimeter pistol. An issue with the 10 millimeter automatic pistols, the plastic framed ones like the Glock is uh, you know, a lot of people say it doesn't happen, but I've seen it happen where they just blow up. I've seen a Glock 10 millimeter ripped right in half. I actually talked to the guy who uh, shot the gun. He uh, had some cuts in his hand. Uh, he was okay, but he drew a little bit of blood. I think he needed a couple butterfly bandages on it. But the gun was, un was unusable. It was totally ripped in half was a smaller factory ammo company um, but I just mentioned that especially the Glocks I know Glock shooters that don't like Glock 10 millimeters probably the worst problem for a big bore heavy recoiling revolver is uh, having the bullet jump the crimp and jamming up the cylinder uh, let me show you if you're not familiar with it I made this dummy round here. Okay, so you put it in, it loads okay. But due to recoil, let's see if this works here. The bullet jumps forward. And now, when you try to do it, the cylinder is jammed up. If you look here, the bullet actually jumped forward and it can't go, uh, it's, it's just hitting the, uh, the uh, chamber or hitting the, the barrel there and the, the frame right there. So right now, this gun is jammed up. You can't unlock it or anything. That's one of the worst things you could do. Buffalo Bore talks about this, and that's why when you hand load big bore revolvers, you, you want to make sure you've got a good crimp, and you have a little bit of... Um, it's not so long that it comes right to the edge of the cylinder. Let me push this back in. I think, it'll, yeah. There, it goes, comes right back out. Probably the biggest problem with a revolver, uh, I mentioned it, it's not a theoretical problem. It happens fairly often on, on the big bore revolvers. So it's something you have to be aware of, and, and if you hand load, make sure your hand loads are good. So with all these pros and cons of the 44 Magnum and a 10 millimeter pistol, which one is the best? Well, that depends on you, you and your training. So let's go over that and what's really important, what really matters in a Baron Connor. So for training, what I use is um, Jeff Cooper's Combat Triad, slightly modified for bear defense. It consists of um, three main sections that are equally important marksmanship gun handling and combat mindset uh, marksmanship that's the ability to shoot accurately but also the ability to shoot quickly dealing with a bear you have to be able to shoot two or three times pretty fast uh, because bears rarely die or stop their charge with one shot There's also the ability to function under very great stress of, of a bear charge to deliver well-aimed charge stopping hits. The second one is gun handling. Gun handling is the uh, ability to draw the firearm quickly and make good hits. 
Also, uh, the ability to reload the firearm if you run the gun dry. It's also the ability to clear various malfunctions uh, that, that pertain to that firearm. Number three is combat mindset. This is a combination of things. This is awareness, being you know aware of your surroundings, being on the lookout for bears. Uh, I would say that experienced hunters have a little bit of, of an advantage in this because most hunters are looking for animals. So it speaks about bear knowledge, uh, how to respond to a bear. Is the bear really charging or bluff charging? how to keep yourself from being involved in a bear charge. State of Alaska Department of Fish and Game, they have a pretty good website on uh, living with bears, living in bear country, responsible handling of bear attractants. Also has a good section on safety in bear country. When you see something like this coming right at you, you wanna be able to respond quickly, get good hits in, and stop the charge. That's all that I have for today, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Everyone stay safe. Have a nice day, and thanks for watching.